Over the years, Amazon has proven to be one of the most recognizable brands in the world. It's almost like nothing goes through the internet without passing through the retail giant company. It's almost hard to imagine that a company like that would grow this much within a few years. Amazon is the second US public company to have a market value of $1 trillion. It hit this milestone weeks after Apple hit the same landmark, but faster. Yes, Apple may have done it first, but Amazon did it quicker. Today, Amazon is worth $1.5 trillion, and its owner, Jeff Bezos, is the first person to be worth more than $200 billion in history. How did all this happen? How did Amazon become one of the biggest companies in the world? Every day, thousands of people surf the internet looking for what to buy for themselves and their loved ones. When they do, it's usually something available on Amazon. And with ease, they settle and have it sent straight to their doorstep. But this wasn't a fairy tale story that started with roses and blooms from the beginning. Amazon, like every other company, struggled a lot at the start. But they did crack the code and move from making a few bucks a month to clocking millions of dollars each day. How did that happen, you ask? Well, for Amazon, the fifth time was a charm. It all started in 1994, when Bezos left his job at D.E. Shaw & Company, a Wall Street firm, and moved to Seattle, Washington, where he came up with a business plan for a new company, which he named Cadabra Inc. It didn't take long for Bezos to discard the name after his lawyer misheard the name as Cadaver over the phone. No one wants a business that sounds like a rotting corpse. It had to go. By September 1994, Bezos played around with a different name idea for his new company and at some point almost settled for the name Relentless. That one too didn't see the light of day, mostly because his friends told him that the name sounded sinister. Although Bezos still has his own Relentless domain, it now redirects to the current website. Eventually, Bezos settled on the name Amazon, an authoritative name that got its inspiration after the largest river basin in the world. Jeff Bezos also claimed that the reference to the Amazon represented his vision of making the company the biggest in the world. And then Amazon launched. When it did, it presented itself as the largest bookstore in the world. Even the tagline was Earth's biggest bookstore. Bezos himself once told a reporter that there's nothing about the Amazon model that couldn't be copied, but that doesn't have to be a bad thing. After all, McDonald's was copied, but it's still a multi-million dollar company. The brand makes all the difference. From then, it was clear that Amazon brand would be one of the greats. Jeff Bezos was already a mythical figure in the business world long before he surpassed Bill Gates as the richest person on earth. But who really was the man? And how did he have the reach to push his company to such great heights? Yes, he's known as the founder of the fastest e-commerce company in recent history. But years before Bezos' net worth surpassed 100 billion, he was the troubled son of a teen mom. From here, it didn't take long for Bezos to turn his life around and build an e-commerce juggernaut. To know more about the biggest e-commerce retail company in the world, we have to take a step back and get an insider look into the life of the man behind the company. But before we move on, leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be the first watching new episodes. Right, back to it. The first place to learn more about billionaire Amazon founder is at the very beginning, his challenging childhood. Born Jeffrey Preston Jorgensen to a 17-year-old mom and a dad who owned a bike shop, Bezos didn't speak much about his dad. He was only 18 when Jeff was born. A few things are clear. First, he only agreed to marry Bezos' mom when he found out that she was pregnant. The marriage lasted only 17 months. His mom moved in with her parents because Jorgensen stayed out late, drank too much, and was generally an inattentive father and husband. He went for a divorce and paid a small amount to child support from time to time. Three years after the divorce, Jeff's mom married another man, Miguel Bezos, a Cuban immigrant who taught himself English. Miguel adopted Jeff and took his last name with Jorgensen's blessing, although he reconsidered and tried to fight it until he dropped entirely out of touch with his ex-wife and his son. Jorgensen's absence from his life was so complete that Bezos said he never met his biological father, even though he lived with him for the first year of his life. Bezos was industrious from a very young life and even living with his grandparents on their farm. According to sources, he helped fix windows, vaccinate the cattle, and do other chores. Apart from being the neighborhood resident good guy, Jeff also displayed a striking mechanical attitude from a very early age. 
Even as a toddler, he would dismantle his crib with a screwdriver. He also developed an intense scientific interest. He made an electrical alarm to keep his younger siblings out of his room and turned his parents' garage into a laboratory for his science projects. It wasn't until he moved to Miami as a teenager that he first fell in love with computers. After spending a miserable sum of time working at McDonald's as a teen, Bezos and his girlfriend started a 10-day summer camp for kids. They charged $600 a kid and managed to sign up six students. He graduated as the school's valedictorian. The National Merit Scholar then went on to Preston University interested in space exploration. That's right, your favorite tech entrepreneur originally planned to study physics. He later gave it up and turned to his love for computers, creating a number of software programs while at the school. He found the field to his life and graduated with a science degree in electrical engineering and a second one in computer science. He worked a few jobs and started the company, and the rest, as we know, is history. Enough about the man, back to the company. Jeff Bezos himself has admitted that Amazon itself isn't very special since several companies are doing the same thing. So what makes the company so unique that we need and use it on a day-to-day -day basis, with the company's recorded profits skyrocketing every year? The truth is that it wasn't always rosy for the e-commerce company. Many people may not remember, but there was a time when Amazon was mainly a place just to buy books. But now the company's reach is practically limitless, thanks to a decision Jeff Bezos took back in 2004. At that time, Amazon was much smaller compared to eBay and was selling mainly books and DVDs, since people weren't sure of buying other products they could easily get at stores. Online shopping wasn't doing very well, and its prospects weren't promising either. Now we get a lot of satisfaction from shopping online, but people just didn't like it as much back then. Most people didn't get the hang of it, and the ones that did weren't particularly keen on paying and then waiting for weeks before the order arrived. What would you do? Place an order online, wait for a week to get your order, and pay while waiting, or you can just walk into a local store, pay for the same thing, and walk out with it in hand. No extra cost. Amazon faced this dilemma, which made them introduce Prime Membership, a paid plan that allowed subscribers for $79 a year to enjoy free two-day shipping. And because at that time, the company was charging $9.49 for shipping service, so even if somehow you managed to order less than once a month, you'd still be covered. As great as the idea was for Amazon Prime, it wasn't Bezos. Charlie Ward, an engineer at the company, came up with the plan, then pitched it to the boss, and Bezos gave it the green light. That decision changed the life of Amazon forever. In the letter posted on Amazon's website, Bezos promised, Amazon Prime takes the effort out of ordering. And he was right. Even though Amazon had already offered free shipping, it required a minimum of $25 per order. You also had to wait for eight to 10 days for your order. So what Amazon Prime did was to remove the greatest obstacle to online shopping, the cost and time having to do with shipping. Today, Amazon Prime is $119, and it offers more than just free shipping. It now includes streaming of music and video services and the popular Prime Day shopping event that competes with Black Friday. Amazon has approximately 150 million Prime subscribers, which the company describes as its most faithful customers. In two decades, this company has expanded far beyond its bookseller debut. It combines its world-spanning retail operation with not flashy but very profit-making advertising and cloud computing businesses. Also, it has expanded into physical retail, particularly with the acquisition of upscale grocer Whole Foods. That's not all. The company has also extended into the tech space and created one of the most successful AI technologies, Alexa. This Seattle-based company has fastened its customer allegiance through smart devices like Alexa and its Prime membership program. Since then, the Seattle-based company has witnessed exponential growth. Its profits trump its closest competitors, and its stock price ratio is almost like nothing ever seen before. For context, in the last 10 years, Apple's market value has increased eightfold, while Amazon's value has grown over 30-fold. In 2018, Amazon's shares were up 75%, while Apple's was a little above 32%. All in all, Amazon may still have a long way to go, but Jeff Bezos bet on his company, employees, and customers paid off in ways he would never have imagined. Creating any business is never easy. Building a profitable business is even more challenging, 
But if there's anything to learn from Jeff Bezos and the Amazon conglomerate, it's that focusing on investing in your customers is the best way to scale and grow. When you decide to invest in upgrading your customer experience in a relevant manner, you provide value. That value leads to loyalty, which eventually leads to more business. That's the Amazon school of running a profitable business. Thanks for watching. Leave the comment down below and let us know what do you think about Amazon. Don't forget to subscribe for new and upcoming episodes.